Still with us is Paul Donovan, Deputy Head of Global Economics at UBS Investment Bank. And first of all, Paul, we've had that better data, jobless claims, of course, falling once again yesterday, Philadelphia, New York, manufacturing better than expected. Is this sustainable, this sort of growth in the US? I think so, yes. Uh, I mean, bear in mind, the US isn't growing at trend. It's still growing below trend, and that's likely to continue. But it's got okay growth. It's not good, it's okay. I think this sort of growth is sustainable. The bottom line is, if you've got a job in America, life's good. Your job's relatively safe, your income is going up, not a lot, but it's going up, and you've got access to credit. And that's supporting the economy at this stage. And how about the rally that this sort of seems to have ignited? Because actually, as you mentioned, you'll think, what are the likelihood of further stimulus? That seems to be being unwound at the moment. Mm. QE3 seems to be coming off the table. Yeah. The dollar, therefore, is doing particularly well this week. We've seen S&P 500 rally, we've seen mm. the stock 600 here. Is the rally sustainable on the back of just fundamentals now, if we're not going to be getting that added stimulus? On the back of fundamentals alone, no, I don't think so. Um, because if we look at the, the fundamentals, I mean, they're OK, but they're not fantastic. We're below not drawing trends, ahead. So. We're below trend. Um, and frankly, you know, the bottom-up earnings analysis is, is miles away from where economists say the economy is going. And of course, economists aren't wrong. It must be the equity analysts that are wrong. <laughs> so I don't think we're going to get sort of the top-line earnings growth. But what we are seeing is uh, elements of a re-rating coming through. As we remove some of the tail risks from the global economy, things like um, a, a liquidity crisis in the yeah. Eurozone, we get a re-rating and that perhaps is supporting the market. And that has all come from the likes of the ECB, the LTRO, that financing operation that helped alleviate any sort of financial crisis you thought credit crunch. When mm. do you think money will be starting to be lent, not only from the US but also in Europe, to the companies? Are companies getting enough access to credit at the moment? In the United States, you know, we're already seeing bank lending increasing. We're seeing stabilisation of bank lending in the UK. In the Eurozone, though, we've got a problem. The banks over the last four years have done nothing. Their balance sheets haven't been reduced. There's been no deleveraging, no de-risking. And now they're under huge pressure to do basically what everybody else has just spent the last four years doing. So the Eurozone banking system is looking pretty um, uh, much like a break on economic activity as we go through this year, not a support. Effectively, in Europe, monetary policy isn't working because the banks are not passing it on. And I want to talk about another potential break on economic growth, and that's oil. How mm. much of a concern is the re elevated oil price for you at the moment? Well, we've got to be careful about this. An oil price increase is neither good nor bad for the global economy. It simply redistributes wealth. You take money away from oil consumers yeah. and you give it to OPEC, simply put. <laughs> so the question is, what does OPEC do with its money? Now, in the wake of the Arab Spring, what we're seeing is that a lot of OPEC states have increased their government spending on social programs, on military spending. And that, of course, is spending on imports. So a country like Germany faces a higher import bill, but it's selling more BMWs in Saudi yeah. Arabia. So it's a compensating factor. Net, I think that the increase in oil prices will lead to a very slight break on economic activity. But I wouldn't want to be too serious about yep. this. We've got an offset.